I miss the 1980s. Back then, if you wanted to lose a quick 10 pounds, you just took off your boots and your belt. Hey guys, it's Beth. How's it going? Just wanted to welcome you to my channel, whether you're a first time subscriber and viewer, or whether you've been here before. Uh, today is a gorgeous day in Northern Virginia. Spring has finally really truly sprung here in the middle of May. Until today, I could have counted the number of sunny days that we've had on one hand and had fingers left over. So I'm glad spring finally made it because it was missing a pretty nice spring. Anyway, uh, I don't have a whole lot to talk about as far as what I have been stitching on lately because I didn't do any stitching at all in the month of April. It's not that the stitchy bug was gone, it was very much here and sitting on my shoulder and making impatient sounds, but I was ignoring the stitchy bug in favor of knitting. I decided that I had too many hobbies Knitting was the last one that I took up, so it can be the first one to go. Never got that good at it. And I have mm, a fair amount of yarn, not a huge stash, but um, I had about 18 skeins of this yarn that I used to make these uh, keyhole scarves, which just use one skein of yarn. And I knitted in April and up through about the first week of May, I knitted about, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 of these scarves, and so I'll put them on sale next fall when the weather turns colder. So I've got a nice little stock built up of those, and the remaining yarn I have I'm going to de-stash. So look out for a video if you're a knitter. I'll do a de-stash video before too much longer of just the stuff I have. It's nothing really spectacular, but I um, thought it could go on to a good home, like some of the old white elephant stitching stuff I had. Um, so speaking of stitching and May, I am not doing mania. Um, I just wasn't prepared for it. Uh, I'm relatively new to floss tube and the uh, Facebook pages, groups that I'm a member of. So mania kind of took me by surprise and um, I'm not, so I'm not doing it, but I am very much enjoying watching everyone's mania videos and plans and your progress. The projects that you guys choose are just gorgeous and uh, I find it really fascinating to watch your mania videos. So please keep it up and um, go you, everybody who's doing mania. Awesome. So far so good. Uh, so loving that. But yeah, not doing it myself. Maybe next year we'll see if my circumstances are uh, any different and I can actually try 15 starts in one month. That's, I mean, man, I don't think I had 15 starts in two years, never mind a month. But eh, you never know. That's what mania is about, right? Uh, kind of pushing the boundaries and seeing what you're made of as a stitcher. All right. Um, so... I uh, haven't been, been stitching that much. I did get into my needlework store, favorite needlework store up in Strasburg, Pennsylvania. I did a video tour of that and it is on FlossTube. If you haven't seen it yet, go and look on my channel. Uh, I just posted it in early May. Um, while I was there, I did pick up a few things. So I'll show you a little. This will be the probably a crap haul video. I'm sorry and I don't by crap I don't mean I bought crap but I mean just the quality of the haul is very small and crappy so this isn't going to be much in the way of haul porn. I apologize in advance to those of you who love haul um, and to those of you who are not so crazy about haul. Well this will be short because it's crap. Don't have much. Uh, so I got some classic color works uh, dyed fibers to do a uh, home of a needle worker. Uh, I had gotten the chart and the fabric for it last time. Didn't even think to check what kind of flosses it used. I think I was just assuming it used DMC. Duh. When will I ever learn? So uh, this time I picked up all the colors and actually the uh, berry color is not the exact one that the 
chart calls for, but I thought it was really pretty. She she was out of that one color, so I got this bandana instead of the other whatever it's supposed to be. So uh, yeah, I thought the colors all look really good together. And it'll turn out nice, and I'll get to that at some point. I don't know when. Um, I also got a Country Cottage Needleworks November Cottage. And my husband's birthday is in November, and I already did the September one because my birthday is in September. So um, I'll get this done and framed and put them up together somewhere. I don't know, maybe downstairs. I have a wall in our kitchen that has a lot of um, sort of Pennsylvania Dutch style and, and prints and little things from that part of Pennsylvania and Maryland. Uh, there's sort of this belt uh, where uh, the German settlers came back in the late 1600s, early 1700s, and so um, I've got a lot of uh, little prints and just gigals and knickknacks, and so I'll probably end up putting the cottages down there together. And the only other thing I, I got from the store, I got some black fabric, which I'll talk about in just a second. And I also got this Jeanette Douglas, uh, A Home in the Woods. It's a little sampler and an accompanying little small cabin. Uh, and I thought it was cute. I like the sampler a lot because it has uh, uh, a lot of specialty stitches. And I miss doing specialty stitches a lot. Haven't done them in a while. And I have a few projects that... I have one on the go that uses a lot of them. And it has cut work too. And this doesn't seem to have any cut work. It's just um, some specialty stitches. And uh, I believe it just uses regular DMC, according to the back here. So I'm okay. I'm, I shouldn't need any overdyes or anything like that. So uh, I should be pretty straightforward to do once I get started on it. Don't know when or who it would be for, but hey, you know, you always got to get something right. If future, future finally finished object type stuff. Uh, and then the only other thing I got, it's not stitchy, but it's this, uh, the beehive uh, taken in early winter 2010, a photograph by Alan Ketchley. And it honestly looks more like a painting than a photograph to me. I think it's really cute. But in hodgepodge in the back rooms, they sell antiques and various things, non-stitchy things, and some books and whatnot. So, uh, I saw this hanging on the wall when I was doing my video tour and decided right there on the spot. You can actually see the part in the video where my camera pans across it and I come back to it and say, okay, this is mine. I'm picking this up. And I did, so it's mine. Uh, and that's almost it for my haul. Uh, I did go to the Joanne uh, DMC sale like everybody did. They had DMC 25 cents a skein, and so I picked up just some extra colors that I needed that I was running low on. Uh, I got a few things for uh, a couple of projects that I'll be working on here in the next uh, few months. So, um, yeah, not, not a whole lot of them. And you know, let me just throw them around. Uh, and so I'll get some of those bobbinated and some of the ones that I don't need immediately, I'll just keep in my bag. I've got an overflow bag of DMC skeins and a list of everything I have. So. Uh, for that inevitable time when I try to kit something up and realize, hey, I don't have that DMC, the first place I do is go shopping in my underbed box for my for my stash. Um, all right, so moving on, whips. Uh, as I said, I have not done any, well, I haven't done a lot of stitching since my last update video with the whips, so I have no progress to report on Mirabilia Twin Mermaids. I was originally going to try to finish that, uh, by June. That's clearly not happening. Uh, I got derailed with this decision to just knit and get rid of all my yarn. I, I was 100% knitting and doing no stitching whatsoever. So I got off track with the with the mermaids uh, and then uh, I had, a, actually it was great, I had a RAC, a random act of kindness for those of you not familiar with the acronym. Uh, done for me by an artist who I very much admire who lives over in France and he does videos and album covers and just other art. He works in a variety of mediums. He, he, he's an animator, illustrator, 
does a lot of stuff. And he's also a musician. He's he's in a band. Um, he sings and plays a lot of the instruments and really, 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 really super talented dude. Anyway, he did a very awesome random act of kindness. I was the beneficiary of that. And so to thank him, I wanted to stitch something for him. And I had a hell of a time finding what I thought was just the right thing to do for him because I mean, what do you what do you stitch for a French artist <laughs> and a lot of what he does is um, you know, it's very nature inspired but there are also some darker themes it's not like gothy like full-on cheesy skull and crossbones woo -woo -woo, gothy type you know, but but it's definitely um, you know, very, you know, darkened woods and, and moss covered rocks and, and very, you know, evocative and moody, a lot of his work uh, and, you know, some serious themes going on. So, you know, what do you do for a guy like that? Well, I looked and I looked and I looked and I decided, okay, I want to do like a tree. Look, he, he, a lot of his stuff is about nature. So I wanted to do some trees. I wanted to find like a cool forest scene and I'm looking and everything, it, all the charts that I, I find with forest or trees, they were either super simplistic, like little kid could do this, very basic cutesy woodland scenes, or it was full coverage, Hayde, Tilton, Crafts type, you know, where, you know, they were two feet by three feet and, you know, over one, 25 count. No, I, I needed something in between. I, not, not too simple and not too big. There's nothing to be found. I looked and I looked and I looked. I finally found a chart that I really liked on Etsy and I'm not going to show it to you. It is only the chart, the, the PDF, um, but I am doing it on black fabric. It can be done as a full coverage thing with a very dark, I think DMC 413 is the background, which is a really dark gray. Uh, I got black fabric. I got 18 count Ada and I'm doing uh, two, two strands full cross on the, the black uh, Ada. And so that kind of leads me into the, uh, my next little topic, which was, um, I was watching Brian C. Super Stitcher's update video from last week and he mentioned that he was in a little group called the Four Stitchers of the Apocalypse with Kate, Katie, and Garrett and I thought, man, that's cool. I want to have my own group. I want to do something like that. Yeah, it would be fun. I would find people to... But what can the group be about? What can, what can our theme be? And then I looked down at the black fabric I was working on and I said, I know, I'll start a group for people working on black fabric. It can be the back in black crew. So if you are doing a current whip, not something that's stashed away that you haven't touched in years and might not ever touch. I mean, if you're currently working on something where it's in your active rotation, you're gonna get to it sooner, or sooner rather than later, then you can join the back in black crew. The only criteria is it doesn't matter how big the project is or what type of fabric it is, as long as it's black. Not dark gray, not dark blue, not dark brown, black. So if you are in that group, then comment and you are officially a member of the Back in Black crew. Woohoo! All right, so uh, other than that, the only thing I wanted to mention was, and I was almost thinking of making this its own separate video. I don't think I will, but um, it's, it's a pretty big shift for me and, and, and the way I stitch, I've been cross stitching since 1994 or so. And, um, I recently, and by recently, I mean yesterday when I was on my way home from North Carolina with my husband, we went down to visit my mother and, and some friends for the weekend. Um, and we were driving back up. And uh, I said to him, we were talking about the uh, jobs where you sit versus jobs where you're up and on your feet and moving around a lot and how 
much healthier it is to have the latter type of job than a fully sedentary type of job. It's been a big topic in a lot of workplaces. A lot of my friends have been talking about it because they've gone back and forth between those two types of jobs and they've noticed that the jobs they've had where they've been on their feet more, uh, they've just generally felt better, they've been healthier, it burns more calories. It supposedly, if, if you believe the, the studies, the information going around out there, uh, standing, uh, if I think the infographic I saw uh, for a website that's really big on encouraging people to stand up more in the day, if you stand up like an extra four hours a day, it'll add two years to your life expectancy or something. Anyway, there's all these uh, health risks and, and uh, cons associated with sitting. Uh, the average person apparently is either sitting or lying down to sleep something like 24, 21 hours out of a 24 hour day. And I realized that I'm, I was one of those people. I have a sedentary desk job, don't get the chance to get up and walk around much. Our workplace where, where the office is is not that friendly or good for walking. And, um, you know, the spring has been terrible and so I haven't been walking around in my neighborhood like I normally do. And I was feeling really bad about this, so I was in the truck with my husband, and I said, "Man, I, you know, I hate. I can get to look into getting a stand-up desk at work. Um, I'd have to pay for it, but I'm, I'm sure I could write it off on, you know, deduct it on our taxes because it's for work." I said, "But I hate, you know, the working, sitting on my butt eight hours a day, and then coming home, and the first thing I do is, you know, I go online and, you know." check Facebook and all that fun stuff, but then I go upstairs in my stitching room and I sit on my butt for several more hours and I stitch or knit or I, everything I do, I'm sitting down. And I really want to try standing up more. If only there was a way I could stand up and cross stitch. And then I thought to myself, why not try it? See if there's a way I can convert my needlework stand to, you know, a stand-up situation. And so I came home, and after we unpacked and had dinner, I came up here to my stitching room, where I am now, and I uh, basically did this. I'll show you the result. I'll turn on the, I'll turn on my ot light too, so you can see better. But, uh, so this is my uh, Artisan Designs Elon floor stand which just has the, the one arm and it has the, uh, the chart holder on the back of it. And I had this table already next to my love seat and it only had one speaker on it. So I took the little speaker off and just moved it to the back of the love seat. So I picked up this floor stand, I put it on the table and then I moved the ot light over and I realized the ot light needed to be raised up. So I put it on this box that has the last of my yarn in it. So I don't need the box. And it's right here by the window. So I have more natural light coming in the window as well. And I can also stand here and look out the window. And I tried you know, stitching a little bit and it went great. And so I stitched a little more, and I actually had the other project. This is Mirabilia's Twin Mermaid. The other, the other project on the black fabric, I, I don't want to show it right now, just because it is, it's going to be a rack for this person and a surprise, and I don't want to show it until it's, it's finally finished. FFO'd. <laughs> so um, this is this is Twin Mermaids, and yeah, no progress since the last time, but uh, I, I found that it was really easy to stand. It was maybe even easier to stand and stitch because I didn't have to worry about my hands banging into my knees as I stitched. And the other great thing I, I realized is that uh, these are the, this is the lock scroll, scroll frames that is also from Artisan Designs. They are designed to go into the uh, holder clamp here on the arm of their stands. And uh, these are the taller, like the, uh, I think these are like the 10 inch high. And I wasn't able to, the last time I tried to stitch with uh, these sidebars, these t higher sidebars sitting down, I just couldn't do it. it. My arm, I was 
holding it at such an awkward angle when it got sort of lower, or actually I think when I was working a little bit higher up, I just couldn't reach far enough under. It was really a, a pain uh, in, in the neck, uh, literally, trying to get, trying to stitch on something, you know, that was this tall. Well, with the standing frame, it is easy. There's nothing to it. When, and by standing, I mean literally like standing up. So now I am, um, this is at standing, I'm five foot seven, and this is at eye height for me, and it is exactly the same height as it is when I'm sitting down. And I know that this, it just happened, it was very fortuitous that I happened to have just the right height stand and just the right height table to put it on, and not everybody has that, but don't let that stop you from tinkering with this yourself. I'm serious, give it a shot. Uh, after I set it all up yesterday, and it literally took me two minutes of, I don't even want to say experimenting, because all I, I literally picked the frame up, put it on the table, stood in front of it, and said, yeah, this, this seems to work. Let me get my light, got my light, put it on the box, started stitching, and didn't stop for over an hour. So I don't need to take breaks as much when I'm stitching. And, and so I've stitched some more today and I stitched for a couple of hours this morning as well. And I'm finding that I can stitch longer uh, without having to get up and, and stretch my legs. I, I don't, and the way I sit, I sit like a five-year-old kid. I like to sit in postures that would have your you know, average chiropractor just smacking you upside the head because I'll, I'll sit with one leg tucked underneath me and I just, here, I, I sit like a little kid. Uh, so obviously don't do that when I'm standing. Uh, when I'm standing, I, I do have to keep, you know, from the waist up, I have to keep really still to make sure I can uh, find the holes on that 18 count black Ada. But uh, from the waist down, you know, I'll, I'll, sit, I'll, I'll, you know, bend my knees. I can, you know, shift around a little bit, move, and, and, um, you know, I stitch to music usually, and I'll, I'll kind of, you know, move a little bit around, you know, to the, to the beat, and, and, um, it burns just that many more calories. Standing up alone burns more calories than sitting, but active standing, where you're, you're not just, you know, totally motionless, but you are. You know, moving around, moving your lower body a bit, uh, burns even more. So uh, I'm hopeful that this will continue to work out. My legs are a little bit sore right now just because I'm not used to standing for really any length of time. But it's carpeted floor, and I am wearing uh, soft slippers with uh, quite a bit of foam padding in the bottom of them, which I know also helps tremendously. And um, I do pause and take little breaks where I'll either walk around, do some housework, or sit down briefly. I'll sit down at the computer briefly and uh, answer messages and check a couple of things. But I've been very motivated to just stay up, stay on my feet. I've got to get used to this. Um, this is also for me, this is partly training for my trip in Dece uh, December. In, um, yeah. Uh, my trip at the end of July where I'm going to Germany and I'm going to be working at this music festival and that's going to be a long day. It's probably going to be 15, 16 hour days and on my feet running around uh, on hard floors. So this is conditioning for me as well. I don't want to get all the way over there, show up for work and find that I can't even get through three hours worth and have to drop out because I'm not used to being up like this. So uh, this is really doing myself a huge favor. And if you are interested in trying the same for yourself, I say go for it. If you believe you are capable of standing, you don't even have to stand for a whole hour or you know, two or however, however many long you want, hours you want. You can just try it for a few minutes. The nice thing about this is that I just picked it up and put it on this table. If I want to sit down and stitch again, I have to just pick it up and put it back on the floor where it was. Move the light back over and done. So really, really easy to move this around. Play around with your own setups. Um, for those of you who do stitch completely in hand, uh, holding, uh, I, I don't know 
what to tell you, but all I can say is if you can do it sitting down, presumably you've got it propped on something besides your lap, I mean, you've got a, a table or a desk that you're using, a countertop, well, give it a try, but just standing up on something that's raised up to a height that you can sit and prop it on and, and work uh, just like you would if you were sitting down. Uh, so give it a shot. Let me know how it works out. Maybe we can end up starting another little stitchy crew like the stand up and stitch crew or stand and do counted cross stitch or I don't know. We'll think of a better name. But uh, I really love to see if other people have the same success that I did. Uh, this was no effort at all and um, I'm loving it and I really do feel like this is going to be one of the best things I've done for myself health-wise in a very long time if all those uh, all those claims about sitting down for too long are really true uh, then I see nothing but benefits for me in this so uh, that's pretty much all I have at this time uh, I will have an announcement coming up shortly about a uh, private group that I have started on Facebook. I haven't invited anyone to it yet. I'm still adding content, but it will be a group to uh, uh, sell my needle minders and a lot of other things besides not just minders. Uh, I also do jewelry. I do accessories. I do things like um, these wrist bobs uh, for keychains that you can, so you can have your keys hands free. Uh, uh, the knitted scarves that I've been working on. Uh, you name it. I'll have all kinds of stuff on there. That is coming up soon. In the meantime, you can keep going to my regular Facebook page for my business, Corva Jewels. I'll put a link for that in the comments below. And yeah, otherwise, if you want to be a Back in Black crew member or a Stand Up Encounter, then comment, let me know how it goes, do your own videos, uh, look for me on Stitch Mania. Uh, I'll post, uh, I'll post up uh, pictures and, and uh, talk about my stand-up uh, setup on there as well. Uh, I think it'd be really interesting and really cool to see who else wants to be a part of this and, and where it goes from here. So uh, that is it for me. So I hope you all are having a wonderful May so far. Keep those Mania videos going. I'm loving them very much. And again, thank you for the subscriptions, the comments, the likes, and I will, as always, try to do the same for your videos. So y'all take care and I will see you soon. Bye.